I have money anxiety, man. I, I, I'm fixing to share a lot of stuff with you guys, just personal stuff. Uh, but I want to be completely transparent with you, right? This is going to be one of those get to know Ricky uh, videos. And uh, I, I, I want to do these kind of videos because I want you to know who I really am because I care about you. And I want a lifelong relationship with you, helping each other, collaborating, doing business, right? Me helping you be more efficient in your business. You helping me by selling more property. <laughs> you sell more property. You're successful. I still have a business helping more agents be successful. That's what I'm excited about is the future for me and you working together. And that's why I want to do a video like this. Do you guys ever wonder why you see people that are so uber successful who continue to grind like they're completely broke, like they're, they're like like they're, you know, they're working a nine to five. They're 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 they don't even hardly see their families. And but yet they have millions or hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. Why? Why do they do this? And it's not true for everyone. It's not true for everyone. Um, but I believe that they have a level of money anxiety, money anxiety, right? It's money anxiety. And this is a real thing. And if you're, you, you, you know, even if you're living paycheck to paycheck, that's money anxiety. You're worried if you can pay your bills the next month. And if you have a billion dollars, you're worried about what? You're worried about losing it all. When you when you get to where you have money, it never goes away. Like you can put money in a bunch of different places, but then you feel like there's still some way that you can lose it all, especially if you went through what I went through. So I have PTSD from what I went through back when I lost everything back in the 2008. It was actually 2005. I sold my last condo in 2005, January, and I sold my first condo coming back in May of 08. So between 2005 and 2008, I sold nothing, and I was literally sleeping in my car. I was eating out of people's refrigerators. I was roofing houses. I was serving tables, and I was working on an oil rig in Mississippi every other week. And just years before that, a couple of years before that, I was a millionaire in my early 20s, a millionaire. And I lost it all. Things went, things were going so good. I had Hummers, Cadillacs, houses, everything. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I get blindsided by the market. It crept up on me. And before I knew it, there was nothing I could do. It was too late. And here I was. You're watching your fortune just vanish right before your eyes. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's one of the worst feelings in the world outside of losing a loved one. Right. Money isn't everything. Money is not everything. It's not it's not anything. Money is nothing. But you need it to live. That's the thing. You need it to live. I mean, you know, you could say, well, I don't need money. And it, well, you don't have a home. You don't have a car. You don't you can't get gas. You can't eat the food that you want to eat, eat healthy, whatever. You do need money to live and you need money to support your family, give them the best life that they could possibly have. So that's where the anxiety comes. It's not about the money. It's about being able to live, and I've been on both sides of it, not being able to afford the food that I want to eat, not being able to buy gas in my car or pay for a house. I've been there, and so now things are going a million times better than it was back then when it, right before I lost everything, and I'm like looking over my shoulder every day. Where's it coming from? Where's the blind side coming from? What, what's going to happen? And... I had to take a step back and realize what, what, what was going on with me. So, so let me walk you through what was going on with me. And it's been going on with me for years. And I didn't even know that it came back to money anxiety. Oh, man, this has been a breakthrough for me. And I hope it helps you what I'm, what I'm explaining here. So I wake up. I've been waking up at 5 o'clock every day. Every, I've, I haven't taken a day off in 10 years. Yes, I go on a vacation. Yeah, we'll travel places to speak. Those are work trips. Um, yes, I take off on the weekends. Yes, at 5 o'clock, I'm done. Yes, yes, yes. Monday through Friday, you know, from really 5 o'clock to 5 o'clock, I'm working. Never took a day off. Never said, oh, I'm just going to lay around today. I'm going to go hang out. I'm going to just watch movies. I'm going to, you know, chill. Never. I hadn't taken a day off in 10 years, 20 years. And it comes from the fact that I feel like if I let my foot off the gas for a second, that could be the moment that I lose it all. It's not going to happen. That's just in my mind. 
I didn't realize I was worried about it until I actually got burnt out. So get up at five o'clock, going to the gym at six, working out like a Navy SEAL. <laughs> By the way, I've lost 20 pounds. I don't know if you can realize that through the video, but um, yeah, from Thanksgiving to now, I've lost 20 pounds. So I'm 222, now I'm 202. Um, eating right, um, taking care of myself, got serious about um, diet. You know, I always worked out hard, always worked out hard, but getting serious about diet was so critical for me and I never could get a hold of it. And I finally said, you know what? I I'm going to do this. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when I uh, quit drinking and doing drugs. It was literally 10 years ago from about 20 days from now. It'll be 10 years. And I was addicted. I was addicted to drugs and I couldn't quit. I wanted to, I tried to, couldn't do it. And then one night I almost died. And I said, if I wake up, I'll never touch anything ever again. Well, I woke up, threw it all away, never touched it, never touched it. So we have to hit rock bottom sometimes. And we have to get fed up with our current situation. Until we get fed up with our current situation, we're not going to change our current situation. It's like a lot of people that won't make calls to sell properties uh, as real estate agents, you haven't got fed up enough with your situation enough to make a change in your life to go crush it, to go, to go, you know, really succeed at a high level. You're, you're satisfied. You're comfortable where you are until you get uncomfortable enough to make a change. Nothing's going to change. Uh, but I was waking up at five. I go to the gym, work out. I come home and I'm like this on my computer, just grinding my face off. Now, everybody knows, and if you don't, now you do. 80% of your actions produce 20% of your results. 20% of your actions produce 80% of your results. So 20% of what you do produces 80% of your results. So think about that. You could work just 20% of what you do, still produce 80% of what you do. Now, if you can become efficient on the 80% that doesn't produce, you know, that, that produces the 20%, you can get to 100%. In about half the time that you're spending now, it's the problem is we're spending so much time doing things that don't move the needle. And that's me, right? And I overcompensate by working really hard to, you know, to, I'm chalking that up to, if I work really hard to keep the pedal to the metal, then maybe I can, you know, be in position to fight off whatever happens that comes along to swoop up my wealth. But the problem is nothing's going to come through. If I lost everything, if we lost everything um our rental properties pays for our life and we own we own those free and clear we have very little debt at all right we owe about 10 percent of what our home is worth this home that i'm in right now uh i pay cash for rental properties i've got a little debt out there on a few things but overall not my i don't buy i don't leverage i don't buy properties and then leverage those to buy other properties i don't do that what I like to do is buy properties, keep them for five, seven years, sell them 1031, that one property into three properties. I like to do that. I don't like to do it the other way around. But nevertheless, the grind. And like, I'm not even like spending a lot of time with my family. I'm in here like I'm a, I'm just like, it's like, when am I going to live my life? So I became burnt out. I became incredibly burnt out here recently. I like, it's been going on for a while. It's like at nine o'clock at night for years, it's like, like I'm dead. I can't even like chill. My brain isn't working. Like it's not, it's not, this doesn't work anymore. So I went to the doctor, I got on testosterone. That's been great, but it hasn't been like the answer. Like it hasn't answered all my problems. Um, I've taken vitamins. I drink more water, I, yeah, all kinds of things. Nothing has really worked, worked. And I started thinking about it and had a long talk with, with my friend Juan. And it's like, he's like, bro, like if you, you know, if you like slept in and like went to the gym like mid morning and like started working at noon, your income wouldn't change at all. And he's right. Everything I have is passive. All my income is passive. You know, and I started thinking about everything that I do and I'm like, oh man, he's right. Why am I living like this? I'm just taking you through the process here of having this money anxiety and what it will do to you and eat you alive. And I don't want it to eat you alive. <laughs> I want, I, I hopefully, you know, if you live paycheck to paycheck, realize that worrying is not going to solve any problems. If something bad is going to happen, it's going to happen. 95% of the stuff we worry about never happens. The 5% that does, you can work, you can deal with it when it happens. And I didn't live, I haven't been living like that. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. So I've just been putting a lot of pressure on myself. You know, why do I answer every single DM? 
It's because I'm scared I'm going to lose the brand equity that it took me. So I've given my soul to the real estate industry. I don't know if you realize that or not, but I have tirelessly coached for free for seven years, helped thousands of agents double and triple their volume, answered every single message, made countless videos and done countless speeches for free. I pay travel. Like I've given my soul, my heart and soul to the industry. And uh, for a long, long time, I know I, I don't know anybody that's done what I've done as far as just pure manpower um, and just giving back, you know, to the industry. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just like, this is kind of a testimony. This, this is me just just venting to you and, and just giving you my thoughts. So, again, hopefully it can help you. So I'm here. I'm getting up five. I'm, I'm working out every morning. I come home. I'm just grind, grind, grind until five o'clock and then I'm dead. Okay, well, that can only last for so long, all right? That can only last for so long. So back in 2005 and seven and eight, I started reading books. I read about 100 books over the course of about three years. And then I quit reading books. I, I, the knowledge from those books took me to be, to sell 100 properties a year for eight years in a row, took me to be the number one REMAX agent in Alabama for several years, number one in my MLS for, for all those eight years. It it made it got me to the point where I wrote a book. It got me to the point where I started doing social media and crushing social media and becoming one of the one of the you know biggest names in North America when it comes to real estate agents. Um, those hundred books a decade and a half ago got me where I am today. But I've been stuck for several years and I'm just grinding, 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 trying to get to the next level, grinding, 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 trying to keep my pedal to the metal to make sure that I don't lose everything I work so hard for. And it's not that I'm I'm, I'm not only working because I'm trying to like make sure I don't lose it all, but I'm also working hard, always trying to get to the next level. But I've been stuck, been stuck for years, been stuck for a couple of years in terms of income, um, just in terms of personal growth. And it all started to kind of hit me uh, about this and came the revelation of, of what's going on here. And now, guess what I'm doing? I sleep till 6, 6.30. I think I slept till like 6.45 this morning. Oh, man, it's been life-changing. Now at, at, at 9 o'clock at night, I'm not dead. I spend an extra hour and a half after I normally go to bed, like from 9 to like 10 30 i think even stayed up to 11 which is like big for me like i'm 42 so i used to go out all night till three or four o'clock in the morning sleep for two hours and go roof houses at seven o'clock i used to do that every day all right but but now it's different and the extra hour to two hours i spent last night with my family was euphoric euphoric because my wife's been doing that my wife's been hanging out with my, my daughter late at night while i'm asleep you know, we chalk it up to, well, he's the breadwinner. He, no, I don't say breadwinner. Like my wife is the breadwinner. Like she's the one that runs everything. I'm just the face of it. What I'm saying is, is like Ricky's the workhorse and he's the one out there really, you know, grinding it and, and coming up with the ideas and executing on all this stuff. Right. Let's let him sleep. But at the end of the day, it's wrong. So now I'm sleeping in. Right. And guess what I do? I don't go to my DMs. I don't come in here and start making lists of what I need to do and priorities and everything else. No, 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 no. What I do is I go straight to a book. Yeah. And for the last three weeks, I've been reading every day. And let me tell you something. My life has already completely changed because of that. The knowledge that I've gained over the last couple uh, two or three weeks has been life-changing, enormously life-changing. The way that I'm talking to people and communicating, the way that I'm carrying myself, the thoughts that I have, the things that trigger certain ideas in my mind is, is on a whole nother level, and I'm just getting started. And I actually went out there, and you guys, you know that I'm the originally, right? I'm originally, I'm like, don't pay for coaching, you know, free coaching, um, you know, um, all this. I went out and wrote a check for $55,000. 50, 55,000 dollars for a coach. And what I've realized, I started charging for coaching back in December. 
And I've been going down that path of understanding it. And what I've realized is that there's a lot of fake coaches, fake gurus out there. There's a lot of people that have not accomplished the things you want to accomplish that are selling courses. They're making a lot of money. They're selling regurgitated information they heard from somewhere else, et cetera. But when you find there are coaches that are the ones, there's the ones out there and the ones, oh, they're worth their weight in gold. Whatever they charge, it isn't enough. Whatever they charge is not enough. Like, for example, I've helped hundreds and we, we've even tried to add it up like somewhere in the thousand plus agents that have doubled and tripled their volume through my free coaching program. And I have testimonials from agents who have made three, four, five hundred extra thousand dollars. They say, I make five hundred extra thousand dollars a year from your advice. Over 10 years, that's five million dollars. 20 years, that's 10 million dollars. Like I added $10 million to their life through my advice, and that may grow to be even more. I've got agents that that will tell me I make an extra one, two. I was talking to an agent today, and I was like, I was like, let's just think about it. Do you make an extra like one to two hundred extra more just based on what I taught you for free? And they were like, That's no, that's low. That's low. And you start thinking about this and you start realizing, okay, because back then it fulfilled me to tell somebody some advice, they go execute and make 500,000 bucks. And that used to be, I used to be like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it was. And now, now that it's proven that what I do, that I am one of the ones, now that it's proven, there's proof that what I do works and helps people multiply their, their income. Now there's actually a quantifiable price to it. If I help someone make an extra hundred thousand a year, is that not worth ten thousand bucks? A one-time fee of ten thousand, you make a hundred extra thousand the rest of your life. It's a million bucks every ten years you made off of that ten thousand dollars worth of advice. It's worth it. And so I had to understand this concept, and I had to separate the, the the thing that pissed me off about paid coaches is the fake coaches that never had a license, that never really sold property, that never had a license, never sold a property. Or the ones that sold 19 properties and they're, and they're selling courses for $3,000. People that were never top producers. Um, you know, listen, it was envy. It was jealousy, really. Uh, man, you know, like I was jealous. Like you didn't even have to do the thing, but yet you're making millions of dollars off of teaching people to do the thing you didn't even do. You know, it enraged, enraged me, not from a from a standpoint of, you know, uh, hating on them necessarily, even though I did hate on people. Um, but it was more just like, man, this is unreal, you know? And then I, I couldn't go out there and sell anything. Anytime, anytime I tried to offer something, you know, for sale in terms of a coaching program, it's because I gave everything away for free. You already got everything for free. Why are you going to pay? You already got it. You're, I've already helped you double, triple your income. What are you going to pay for something for? I've already given it to you. I get it, right? I've kind of brought that on myself. Um, and that's fine. I understand. I understand how I dig myself out of that hole. But the point is, is that I understand the game now and what that charge is really for. So when I paid this man $55,000, I did it in full confidence that I'm going to make a million a year, a million a month, a million, like, I'm going to make so much money off of the knowledge that I get from this guy because he is one of the best in the world at what I want to do. And I'll make so much money from that $55,000 investment. So I did that. So I'm reading. I hired a coach. And I'm in a much, much better place. I'm sleeping more. Um, and everything is, is, is a complete 180 right now from where it was just a month ago just a month ago and i am i am changing right i am transforming into ricky 5.0 reading more oh my gosh it has changed my life already i'm communicating better i'm 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 helping people more it's just it's the quality of life so anyway 
Um, I just wanted to share this. Uh, my dad sent me this text. I want to share that with you in just a second. He sent me a devotional, one of those daily devotionals about what we're talking about. But I just wanted to kind of recognize that I know there has to be other people that are going through this. Uh, money anxiety. Oh, it's a killer. It, it will rip you to shreds. And it, it's ripped me to shreds. And I still have it. It didn't like go away. Like I'm still like worried, but, I'm, but now I'm conscious of the fact that it's going on. I'm conscious of the fact that I have it and I, and it's, and it's a work in progress is what it is. And I've got to like, like Juan said, bro, it's, it, it's time for you to live your life. My dad said, he was like, I've been war warning about you, all the money you make. He was like, I've been wondering why you're not in Italy and, and in Africa and in Morocco. And like, he was like, I don't know why you're not traveling the world and just chilling. Like if I had your money, like I would just be, hanging loose. I wouldn't be grinding like a government mule every day. Um, so anyway, but that, that's just who I've always been my whole life. That's all I know. Like in my mind, I'm still the teenager roofing houses trying to make a million dollars, even though I have the millions in my mind, I don't, I'm still trying to get there. You know? So, but I'll tell you this before I, I share the, the devotional that he shared with me. Um, a lot of people think, okay, well, once you make a million, then you'll make 10 million. Once you make 10 million, you want to make a hundred million. Once you make a hundred million, you want to make a billion. Once you make 1 million, you want to make 2 billion, blah, 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 blah. Right. And yes, I get that. I understand where you're coming from when you, when you say that. But for me, what you have to understand is that I always itched for a nicer house. I always itched for a nicer car. I always itched for better life. And, you know, everywhere we lived, Everywhere I lived, and I lived different places with Carlin, I've always wanted a nicer place, nicer car, et cetera. In 2020, we bought this house. I haven't had a single moment that I wanted a nicer house. So that did stop. It's not like I just wanted more and more and more and more. It, it, I wanted more and more and more until I got to a point, and then I was good. I have zero interest in buying another house, moving not because of interest rates and stuff, just because I don't have that itch. I'm not like, I want something newer, nicer, bigger, badder. Um, my car, when I got my Tesla, I haven't, you know, I used to want a new truck every, I had four F-150s. I used to want a new one every year, every year, every year. Not every year, every two years. Every two years, I would get a new truck. And when I got my Tesla, that stopped. I haven't even had the single inkling of uh, the feeling to want to wanna get a new car or a truck or anything. My wife got an Escalade in 2011, a brand new one. Or maybe it was 22, 21 or 22. And um, the 21. And we we haven't had a single itch. We used to want another one. She had a Lexus SUV. We wanted another one. We got the Escalade. We haven't had an itch to want anything else. So what I'm saying to you is that, yes, I still have an itch to get to the next level of business and success and make more money. Yes. But I want you to understand it's it it will stop for me. I will get to a level where I'm like, okay, this is where I want to be. Just like my house, just like my car, this is where I want to be. I will get to a level of income where I'm like, okay, this this feels good. This feels safe. This feels comfortable. This is where I've wanted to be. I don't know what that number is. But we, I will. Hit. I didn't know this house was going to be the house that made me stop wanting houses. I didn't know my Tesla was going to be the car that made me stop wanting new cars. I don't know what level of income I'm going to have to hit to where I'm like, okay, I feel great about this. But it, I know based on what's happened with my car, my house, my wife's car, that I that it will happen and I will get there. And um, now I'm just enjoying the process. I want to read this to you uh, before we go. Uh, let's see. Let me scroll up to his text message. Share this with you. So we we talked about this. And like I said, he was like, man, I, I've been wondering about you is what he said. But he sent me this right after we left each other. We work out every day in the gym together uh, every morning. And even since I switched over to doing later in the mornings, he still comes. So he came today at 10 o'clock. He went yesterday at 1230. So he sent me this. It says, I'm leading you step by step through your life. Hold my hand in trusting dependence. Letting me guide you through this day. Your future looks uncertain and feels flimsy, even precarious. 
That is how it should be. It should be flimsy. It should it should seem out of whack. Secret things belong to the Lord, and future things are secret things. When you try to figure out the future, you're grasping at things that are mine. This, like all forms of worry, is an act of rebellion, doubting my promises to care for you. Okay? Trying to figure out the future, right? You're, you're grasping at things that you don't have any business grasping for, right? Live in the present. Whenever you find yourself worrying about the about the future, repent and return to me. I will show you the next step forward and the one after that and the one after that. Relax and enjoy the journey. Oh, relax and enjoy the journey in my presence. <laughs> Trusting me to open up the way before you as you go. And there was a few uh, scriptures in here. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may follow the words of his law. Luke 12, uh, 12 25 says, uh, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Mm. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Um, so, I mean, let me, I just want to say that one sentence that really hit me. Relax and enjoy the journey. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We go to church every every Sunday. We're part of a really, really incredible church. And uh, we enjoy, um, you know, going to church and being a part of that. Um, but, yeah, I uh, – anyway, look, just wanted to share this with you. I hope – maybe you got something out of this. Maybe you didn't. I felt like, hey, let me let you get to know me a little bit more. There's a lot of things about me you don't know, but over time I will share those type of things with you. And if you ever have any questions, man, if you guys ever have anything uh, that you want to share with me, you can share with me in confidence. I'm happy to help in any way possible. All right. All right. You guys have a good rest of your yeah. day. We'll talk to you soon. I 35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to.